speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester, indeed. So here we are. This is Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and thanks, folks, for coming out. We're having a roundtable discussion today about this whole um, hot topic of mayoral control in Rochester. And today, to um, elaborate on this and shed a lot of light and information, we have three uh, really involved folks from the community from various organizations represented here. We have Bishop Tillman. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And we have Ryan Acuff from Students from a Democratic Society and um, Dan DiClemente from the Union Bente. So I'm going to let you folks start and just um, begin the conversation with your involvement, like how you came into this and the angle in which you're involved with opposing mayoral control. So Dan, I'll start with you and we'll go down. Well basically, um, we started to get involved when Mayor Duffy started talking about this mayoral control issue of the city school district. Um, I represent a lot of the members in this community, um, non-teachers who work for the city schools and also send their children and grandchildren to city schools. The majority of my members live in the community. And when you're talking about taking away their voting rights, which is what, it, what we're talking about here, uh, they're looking to remove a school board that was recently elected uh, by the public. They want to remove that voice that they have in education and replace it with one person who would have control and say over all of the issues in the city school district. And we just don't believe that that's fair. Um, we don't believe that that's right. And we don't believe that that rolling back on civil rights issues is the way to go. Has the mayor come to talk to either folks in the union or to you at all? No, he hasn't. Um, and that's one of our problems is the fact that he's rolling this out without getting information from the community. What he should have done was hold the public forums first to find out if people were interested in, uh, in such a takeover. Instead of saying, I'm going to go to Albany, advocate for this, and then come back and find out if the public is interested in it or not. He's recently canceled the public forums, and we think that that's a disservice to the community because people are chomping at the bit for information and to talk about this plan that he's introduced, which we don't see as much of a plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about that because people are expressing themselves one way or another with or without his listening, so we'll, we'll get to that. Ryan, would you like to uh, talk about your entrance way into this? Yeah, I mean, similarly, when Mayor Duffy announced his plan in December, um, you know, groups I'm a part of, mostly Rochester Students and Democratic Society, took on the issue right away. It's directly about democracy stripping voting rights away from citizens um, in our community, and it's about students. So this is directly affecting students the most. There's a lot of talk about parents in the community, but um, it's their education system that's being, um, that's, that's in a lot of trouble. And we feel that instead of, we agree that the, there's a lot of issues with the education system, but the problem isn't that we need to have less democracy, but if anything, we need more democracy. And moves towards ways that empower the community more, give more community control over schools instead of less. Mm -hmm. So moving towards different reforms, such as nonpartisan elections, participatory budgeting, ways that the community can be more directly involved. So this is a directly relevant issue. We've been involved with a number of issues in the Rochester City School District, and this is obviously a, a very outrageous move that the mayor wants to wants to push forward, but um, I think now he's seeing he, he really um, underestimated the community. He thought because he's very you know popular in a lot of um, indicators that there's being a lot of pushback now. Um, so, yeah. 
And I want to hear more later because I know students for Democratic Society normally do a lot of direct action, like great street organizing to get a lot of people together, what you have planned or what you've been doing. So yeah. if you could speak to that later. Uh, but first, Bishop Tillman. Uh, um, thank you. Well, go. my participation is uh, both professional um, as well as personal. I am a grandfather of four children that are in the Rochester City School District. I have a teenage grandson who is a freshman at Franklin, uh, and uh, the other three are between middle school and elementary school. Um, I've known Mayor Duffy uh, most of my life since my teen years, and um, uh, our friendship has wavered uh, at times, but we've gone through a lot of storms, and we are still good friends. I'm in total opposition of uh, my good friend being in control of the schools because he does not have the background, uh, neither have I seen the qualified uh, consulting of people who can help him make such a decision of changing over the one of the most important systems in Rochester, that system that trains and educates our children. One of the problems that I have, um, uh, it was brought to my attention, not that I had the problem with it, but that the problem was starting to exist in Rochester, it was brought to me by my good friend and fellow activist Howard Eagle and uh, also Wallace Smith. That they were um, mobilizing elements in the community under the Community Education Task Force to uh, give, as my good friend has said, pushback against uh, this thought of mayoral control of the schools. Uh, I'm glad to see that there is a strong representation and strong pushback from uh, Ask Me Bente uh, and also a number of other organizations and unions in the city against this thought. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it later or it will be talked about, but throughout all of the cities in the United States that have mayoral uh, control, there have been no documented uh, evidences uh, or outcomes that can definitely uh, support uh, mayoral control as being um, a major element in uh, student accomplishment being uh, or student performance uh, being improved. Mm -hmm. So this is not something that just happened in a vacuum or just happened overnight. That's what I want to know next. So will, will you talk a little bit like the timeline of this, like how this came about and the, the process in which? Well, um, some might be speculation, but some is definitely fact. Um, um, bore out in the history of Superintendent Brizard coming to Rochester and also uh, Mayor Duffy coming into power as mayor from the Office of Chief of Police. Um, I was working as the Northeast Region Director of um, Educational Programs, and specifically No Child Left Behind of the Princeton Review on Broadway in Manhattan in uh, downstate New York when uh, our Superintendent Brizard had been promoted to a higher office by the Commissioner of Schools in uh, New York City. And as a Haitian American, uh, I saw him close down uh, a number of Haitian Americans serving schools immediately upon his arrival into that position. Shortly thereafter, my wife called me um, from Rochester and she says, do you know who our next superintendent of schools is going to be? And I said, no. And she said, Superintendent Brizard, uh, Jean-Claude Brizard. And wow. I thought that was definitely a beginning of the end. Yeah, and it's going to be continued because we have to take a quick break. We're watching uh, Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV and we're going to pick up uh, on that point when we come back. Stay tuned. My name is Ricardo Adams. I'm a parent of a child in Soda and a preschool child in number two school, and I have an up and coming child. Um, this is about the Community Education Task Force. The Community Education Task Force was formed as follow up to a parent and community speak out held at the Rochester Museum and Science Center on January 9th. It became clear to us that a large group of those who attended the September 9th speak out opposed mayoral control of the Rochester City School District. Thus, we decided to help facilitate ongoing dialogue, organize resistance, leadership, and directive support regarding parents, activists, and community members' desires to defeat Mayor Robert Duffy's proposed takeover of the Rochester City School District. 
Okay, kids, here we are at the slavery exhibit. Now, as you can see, the slaves were kidnapped from their homes, chained together for weeks. They would cram them onto these ships in very appalling conditions. Thousands of women and children are being smuggled across the border. Sexual trafficking of children. And as you can see right here, they were treated like animals. They worked all day long for no pay. In sweatshops raided by police, children forced into slave labor. Some of the slave masters were very cruel. They whipped them and they beat them, as you can see in some of these pictures. Torture and assault well, be brutal, even fatal. So, before moving on, are there any questions? Um, does this still happen today? Okay, we're back uh, in DTV here. We were just uh, hearing from Bishop Tillman some of the background coming out of New York City with Brizard uh, instituting this, um, you know, supporting as superintendent there, mayoral control, and then within, like, he wasn't there very long, and then he got Not to all. Rochester Not to all. probably, you know, implement the same strategy. And uh, Dan, you had some comments? Well, um, the superintendent attended the Broad Academy, uh, and that academy pushes for mayoral control in city school districts. So um, the fact that he's a product of that type of philosophy, in addition to the fact that they had mayoral control in New York City, and if you listen to, to the superintendent, he says, I'm not gonna take a position on mayoral control, but let me tell you how well it worked in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely think that he's taking a position on mayoral control, and if you look at the fact that the mayor is not interested in removing Superintendent Brizard. It's obvious to me, anyway, that they've talked about this issue and that the superintendent doesn't have an issue with it. If I could interject, mm -hmm. uh, that's an excellent point. And also, let us stay very observant with the fact of the recent termination of Marilyn Patterson Grant from a number two position, a position that was uh, uh, objectified to improve student accomplishment or student performance. Now, being there such a short time, how was she going to turn that around in such a short period of time? And yet she's terminated. Now, watch who will be brought in. Will that be a person from downstate, once again, from that uh, uh, um, Bloomberg administration? type of thinking where the mayor has control of schools, so that person is positioned now with Brizard and then right along with uh, Mayor Duffy to try to institute more influence on the community, or even if that person doesn't come from downstate, will they come from a city that supports mayoral control? I think these are all indicators mm -hmm. of the storm that's gathering, mm -hmm. but one of the main things we can see is some of the early and critical mistakes that my good friend Mayor Duffy has made by calling forth through a knee-jerk reaction, seeing the response or the pushback from the August body of people who are against it, calling for informational forums, and then immediately, almost immediately after the mailing went out, to uh, uh, say, I'm not going to have the first two meetings, okay? Uh, we don't have uh, our paperwork together. One more thing, the draft, this so-called uh, outline of a plan, to me it was speaking points to a political speech that would have been appropriate, but it's definitely not an outline to a plan of how mayoral control is going to benefit our parents and students, who, mind you, are the end users of this product. I do want to hear about the draft, but I want to ask Ryan, uh, how many cities right now are kind of under mayoral control, and what does it look like? What's the outcomes been? Are anything successful? It doesn't seem. Yeah, currently there's seven cities that are under complete mayoral control. Um, major cities such as Chicago, Washington, D.C., Cleveland, and of course New York City, which is the model that um, um, Mayor Duffy is taking as inspiration most directly. And um, in terms of all major indicators, the federal, federal um, standardized performance tests, there have been no improvements in any of the districts um, the under mayoral control. And, um, and the graduation rates also have not increased. And there's been a number of these districts actually an increase in the achievement gap in the districts, which is, which is one of the reasons um, supposedly this is supposed to be 
you know, we can just centralize the control, watch would be accountability, we can just make all these magical reforms and sweeping changes. But can, there hasn't, we haven't seen those can changes. Can someone speak to that? Because I feel like it's like the two-tier, we're going to, you know, we're going to go to war for democracy and, and all these things, but we know there's a hidden agenda. Are we really, you know, concerned? Like, do you think this is about, like, you know, education and improving schools or what's, what's really going on here? Yeah. Oh, uh, over a billion dollars <laughs> worth of power. Yes, so I think there's, a, in a direct way, in terms of the mayor, you know, control over a large budget, so more control over money. In a larger way, there's an agenda, and it's not that hidden. Um, it's, 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 you know, as was mentioned, um, Eli Broad works with a number of institutes with um, the Gates Foundation, supporting studies which are very, very much supporting marital control in order to um, implement an agenda of charter schools, um, increasing charter schools, increasing privatization of education, contract schools, all ways of stripping public um, control over the educational system, and then and then putting more emphasis on merit to pay for teachers, where there's directly being focused on the standardized test scores. So there, so this is this is out there, and um, very directly, um, Secretary of Education Arne Duncan, in March, in his speech to the all the mayors of the country said that um, he will do everything in his power to support mayoral control everywhere. So this is coming from the top um, and uh, of the current Obama administration. And, um, and all indicators say this is, this is given um, Duffy sort of the, the confidence to go through with this to say he'll have all And when you support. look at the financial uh, history, when you look at New York City, their budget has ballooned under Bloomberg from $12.5 billion to $21 billion. So it hasn't saved money like Duffy says it's going to do. Um, but in addition to that, a lot of that money has gone toward privatization. They have a lot of no-bid contracts with no oversight, um, things that go to different contractors with nobody with any authority to vote them down. Or, And, and if you look at the appointed school board in the New York City system, um, Bloomberg has removed people who were appointed by him if they haven't gone along with his, his ideas. So... Uh, it's it's very dangerous to to concentrate power into one person's hands with no oversight. What kind of expertise do these mayors have? Like, what kind of background? I mean, how does this <laughs> qualify them in any way to have a position like this? Usually, they they don't have any specific educational expertise, and that's the case with Mayor Duffy. Whatever one thinks about him as a person or as a mayor, he certainly doesn't have any educational expertise or background. And I think his plan proves that. Um. This, I, I think no, this occurs. It's a I bad think, idea. It's a yeah. bad idea. That's all <laughs> I can say. I think this happens <laughs> good when it. you have. Is there any support on what? this? Does anybody? Is hey, look, I'm the Republican in the room. <laughs> I really think. I really think that the support he's getting out of this are from people who are so fed up with the system that they just say, "Let's try anything." Really, when you talk about uh, people who are for mayoral control, that's their answer. Well, it can't be worse than it is. Right. I mean, he's shown no ability to state what he's going to do to raise graduation rates and help these kids. All he's done so far is attack the system, and that apparently is popular. Um, but he's, he's finding out very quickly that there's enough people in this community that are saying, no, uh, we don't want to lose our school board. Uh, we can go to them when we have issues on education rather than, and there's also talk about putting more power in the city council's hands. And I think that that needs to be addressed as well because uh, they have more competing issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we're going to talk about that, like other alternatives to mayoral control and how people can get involved in the movement that's growing around the opposition to mayoral control. When we come back, and uh, you've been watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. Check Such it out. Such an arrangement would deprive the citizens of Rochester of our constitutional rights to vote for our representatives of choice to oversee the education of our children. This action would seek to repeal our suffrage rights for which our ancestors fought. And that's not okay. Robert Duffy, to our knowledge, has no adequate educational background or expertise knowledge that places him as a prime candidate for such an undertaking. And so we oppose giving him or anyone four years to experiment with students and children who already are in a vulnerable state. You can't treat children like lab rats. Other proven, more viable options need to be explored first. We oppose place placing concentrated power in the hands of one individual in a community where we value collective wisdom and work. His proposed model deprives us of that. The collective model offers more opportunity for access, accountability, and checks and balances. 
The current support garnered from mayoral control of schools seems to be based primarily on individual personality and passion, which is great, but it's problematic. It's a problematic precedent that is set for future mayors that may succeed him, that may differ in personality and lack the same compassion for children or desire for such control. We need to tool our current system and school district with systemic mechanisms that will produce stellar educational outcomes. We offer a vote of no confidence in his ability to produce a viable plan for academic improvement within the Rochester City School District. We believe that he's underqualified for such a position, and we need him to take control of the lingering city issues for which we voted him in office for. We continue the roundtable discussion about mayoral control, and um, I think where we want to go now in our, in our last segment is First, it doesn't sound like Duffy has a very clear plan, and uh, this whole idea of improving the Rochester School District without a plan is a little outrageous and frustrating, and there are some concerns because he's just speaking vaguely about things. I've heard concerns about, um, you know, it's anti-union and that it's uh, escalating a police presence possibly in the school. Dan, could you talk about those things, please? Well, he talks about making schools safer, and he knows how to make schools safe. Well, we have uh, school safety officers, which are sentries, who work for the city school district now who are a part of our bargain unit who do everything they can to keep schools safe. Um, they do not carry weapons. I'm not sure if Mayor Duffy is saying that he wants a police presence where there's people carrying weapons uh, to make sure that schools are safe. And I'm not sure that's a great idea, but he doesn't elaborate really in his plan, so it's very difficult to find out where he's coming from. It's more of an attack the school district type of a document. Uh, he has very few answers. He talks about keeping the buildings open later. We're all for keeping the, the buildings open later, but he can do that now without mayoral control. So um, I think that he needs to come up with more solutions as to how he's going to improve uh, school graduation rates. And I'll tell you, really, the root cause of all of this is the poverty levels that these children are, are living in. And I think that the mayor needs to do uh, more of a job to attack the socioeconomic issues that he does have control over right now in order to get these kids better living conditions so that they can succeed in school. So could we speak to some alternatives? I mean, all of you must be thinking about this often. You know, there are some real concerns. What are some of those concerns right now within the school districts, Ryan, and what, what kind of uh, suggestions or proposals, you know, could you see? Well, I mean, I think reform of the, the school district is a very intense, deep topic. You know, it leads mm -hmm. very large um, structural changes, and basically getting everybody involved in it, I think, is the best thing, getting parents, getting the unions, getting the students involved, everybody on the table, and having, and hopefully this is what this um, power grab is going to stimulate the community to come together and actually work for some solutions. I mentioned a couple of things just in terms of some structural changes to democratize the system further, so not having partisan elections. Um, because there are issues sometimes with the school board and not always working for the interest of the students. And um, like, like a number of uh, districts in upstate New York, and having, um, for some reason, the white, predominantly white suburban districts do have more control over their budgets and can directly be involved and monitor and have more oversight. But, um, you know, in the inner city schools where lower economic status and people of color, the, um, there isn't that type of control. Um, so, so I think those are some general things. And, and then also in terms of, you know, reordering our principles in terms of an equity model of funding education. So not based on deficit. So not giving more money just because someone's doing bad. So there's, you know, these reverse sort of incentives for improvement, but based on um, that everybody has equal rights to funding and, you know, education should be a right for everybody. So those would be some general principles that we can come to the table. But everybody has to come to the table and actually improve education with involvement of the whole community. Bishop Tillman, would you like to I, I really agree with a lot of those points. I, I think that partisan politics has really been a deficit uh, as far as uh, electing school board members. Um, I think that private agendas have overwritten the um, public uh, concerns. Um, one of the things I'd like to see changed is um, for folks, I'm going to just say it plainly, for folks to stop complaining about the mayor taking over and then using the argument of we have elected school officials when you've constantly elected the same, some of the, some of the same incompetent officials 
to run things because if you keep doing what you've always done and expect a different result, that's called madness. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the madhouse. Mm -hmm. Now the mayor wants to take over. And now we say, and we just had an election period where there were a few people who were slated that could have been voted in, that could have brought some radical changes. And that's what's happening now. There's a revolution in education. There's a revolution in systematic education and how it's structured. So I'd like to see some of those systems change. And I don't want to end this segment and the show before we talk about um, some of the great organizing that's been going on thus far, uh, the turnouts, the meetings, the pickets, the protests, the storming city council, like speaking out despite the opposition of, you know, people wanting to listen, like the mayor and other representatives. So can we talk about some of the things that have been happening? There's the Community Education Task Force, a coalition. How can people get involved? What's going on? What's been successful so far? And... Uh, people say? Yeah, so the Community Education Task Force is a coalition of groups, so it's, uh, one thing that's been very positive is that community has been coming together from from religious ministers to parents to, to labor to students, um, and that's been sort of the one of the main organizing bodies, having consistently pickets for um, Joe Morelli, David Gant, uh, having speakouts, press conferences on a consistent basis. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, at um, the Helping Hand Baptist Ministry, I believe it is, is a, is a forum on marital control for the community to get involved, um, be part of the discussion um, at 6.30 at um, um, 703 Joseph Avenue, I believe. And um, and the um, in terms of getting involved, you know, the best way is to um, find us, you know, we have Facebook group, Stop Marital Control. Um, we also have a website, Stop Marital Control at Rocus, R O C U S dot org. Hopefully, you can put that up. Mm -hmm. a, so, yeah, so to get involved in uh, all of the events posted, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's um, people going to be going to Albany soon to to meet with certain officials there. Probably going to be some protests. So, it's, it's a steady a steady um, activity um, that's going on, and you know, depending on the conditions, we'll continue that. And uh, either Bishop Tillman or Dan, would you like to use our last minute to just comment about the? Um, you know, response from the parents and students and community activists so far? I, there's no question. From what we've seen, it's been overwhelming. Um, they're very upset with this issue, especially since they keep saying that Albany is going to make the decision for us. We need to make the decision for our legislators in Albany. So I think it's very important for the community to stay actively involved, get involved in the protest, get involved in writing your assemblymen and your senators to tell them that you do not want them to take away their school board, their right to vote, and put the power in one man's hands. So I think it's very important that they contact their senators and their assemblymen to tell them to advocate for their interests in Albany, not their own interests. Bishop Tillman, you get the last word. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, and, and I'm honored that you uh, have invited me here. Uh, I would like for parents and students to either call me or contact me via email, um, and that's going to be put up, I guess, at the end of the show, okay. um, to let me know how you really feel about this uh, power grab. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. This has Thank been a you. great discussion. Thank it's going to be an ongoing discussion, and uh, folks have been watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, rochester.indymedia.org. Check us out online. The show will be airing both on the Internet and on RCTV's um, station here. So thank you.